Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Minakshi Dobra, and today I'm going to talk about newer imaging techniques in open angle glaucoma. My mentor is Dr. Shalini Ma'am. Loss of 35.7% of retinal ganglion cells was required to detect glaucomatous changes in conventional visual perimetry, thus allows the need to uh, device technology for pre-perimetry detection of glaucoma. Firstly, we are going to talk about frequency doubling perimetry. There are two types of retinal ganglion cells, M-type and P-type. And M-type detect low contrast and high temporal frequency and project to magnocellular layer of later geniculate body. These large diameter M cells are first to die in glaucoma and this forms the basis of FDT. Stimulus is a low spatial frequency sinusoidal grating with alternating white light and dark bars which undergo high temporal frequency counterface flicker. How it is done? On a center of a screen, a black dot is seen for the patient to fixate and wherever the grating is seen, patient has to press a button. Based on the contrast required to perceive grating, a threshold is estimated at the tested location. It offers a screening program that is C20 and threshold programs N20 and N30. Moving on to GDX VCC, it provides a quantitative uh, objective quantitative assessment of peripapillary RNFL with a measurement time of 0.7 seconds for each eye. Principle is that of scanning laser polarimetry, which is based upon the principle of birefringence. In retina, the parallel arrangement of microtubules in retinal ganglion cell exon causes change in polarization of light passing through them. The change in polarization of light is called retardation, and retardation value is proportional to the thickness of RNFL. VCC stands for variable corneal compensator, which was created to account for variable corneal birefringence in the patient. This is how the GDX printout looks like, and we need to go through the five key, key elements of the printout. Moving on to OCT, it is a non-invasive diagnostic imaging technique which provides high-resolution cross-sectional and quantitative analysis. It is based on the principle of low coherence interferometry based upon Michelson interferometer. There are three types of OCT, time domain OCT, uh, spectral domain OCT, and swept source OCT. Swept source OCT has an A-scan speed of 1 lakh scan per second, which gives an axial resolution of 6 micron. For glaucoma, three scan protocols are used. Macular analysis, RNFL analysis, and optic nerve head analysis. Important best parameter for, for glaucoma detection in optic nerve head analysis is rim area, vertical rim thickness, and vertical CD ratio. In RNFL analysis, it's inferior and average RNFL, and in macular ganglion cell analysis, it's minimal GCIPR. It is very tempting while looking at the OCT uh, printout to look at the colored images, but we should take, uh, take into consideration all the parameters to come to a diagnosis. These are the optic nerve head analysis parameters, and this is how the ganglion cell uh, and macular cube analysis looks like. Moving on to HRT, that is Hedenberg Retinal Tomography. It is a quantifiable scanning laser ophthalmoscope that is capable of acquiring and analyzing three dimensional image of optic nerve head and peripapillary retina. Principle of is that of confocal imaging. A contour line is drawn at the scleral rim inner border, and a reference plane is automatically generated. Anything below the reference plane is a cup, and above the reference plane is a rim. HRT2 differs from HRT3 in that the contour lines in HRT3 are drawn manually, whereas in HRT3 it is automatically generated, and HRT3 also gives a glaucoma probability score. This is how the uh, HRT printout looks like. And it also gives smooth field regression analysis and glaucoma probability score. In conclusion, I would like to say that both structural and functional aspects to be evaluated in order to give full glaucomatous judgment for diagnosis of glaucoma. And these uh, diagnostic tools cannot be used in isolation. Thank you. Dr. Pinakshi, you can unshare the screen. Yes, ma'am. And answer the questions. Uh, Dr. Minakshi, you, you rightly said uh, uh, any any one of this uh, can't be used in isolation. But just in case, uh, all, all the imaging modalities, all, all, uh, whatever investigative modalities that are available for uh, uh, glaucoma evaluation, uh, you're given a choice of only one. Which one would you go for? OCT, sir. Mm, given a choice between... Uh, uh, Mm, perimetry and uh, any of this, you'll, you'll go for OCT? Yes, sir. Why? Because it's easier to perform. Because OCT gives us uh, the analysis 
also you you, you can you you can you can uh, switch on a video now so i'll try so my video is switched on already i don't know why it's not coming okay okay uh so uh, so you you mean to say that uh, uh, oct has an edge uh, edge over uh, uh, perimeter in uh, uh, in any any stage of uh, see what 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 would in the in the later stages of uh, uh, glaucoma mm, which one would you prefer so what what uh, uh, what is what is the degree of change that is required uh, to pick up the change in oct when compared to uh, uh, the changes that that happens in uh, uh, visual fields in later stages uh, hfa is better why because we can get uh, if we do 10-2 in the 10 degree we can get 68 points uh, no no uh, it's not exactly that uh, uh, just uh, find out and uh, tell me later yes sir, yes, sir. thank you So good presentation, uh, Minaki. So uh, uh, basically, you want to use an uh, OCT for, uh, like uh, Dr. Srini was telling you, for early glaucoma. So when you have something like a, uh, between a, a 55 or a 72 average uh, uh, micron, uh, then uh, you would want less than 55, you would want only function. Between 55 and 72, you would want both function and uh, uh, structure. And beyond uh, 70, beyond uh, 72, 82, you would want just the structure because it is more uh, sensitive. Yes. So uh, you you said if you were to choose between different machines, uh, which which whether you would you, you so a function you can't compare a function with a structure but if you are having to choose between a structural machine which one would you choose so and why structural, uh, structural we use perimeter because uh, no function is perimetry structure would be either an OCT an OCT HRT or, or a, a fundus photo. Yes, a, a uh, fundus color, photo. Fundus yes. Multi -color OCT, GDX, and a HRT, which would you choose? Why? So, because uh, we choose OCT because uh, this GDX and HRT are associated with a lot of uh, artifacts. And in uh, GDX, there is this birefringence, and uh, there are other birefringent structures in the eye, like cornea and lens. And that's why it is associated with high artifacts. And in OCT, we can do uh, ganglion cell analysis also, as well as the progression analysis can be done. Okay, yeah, I would, I would say, I would go with you with an OCT, more so because it is more versatile. It has more advantages. Now, uh, you can also see a retinal uh, image over here, which in the others is not that yes, uh, you don't get. So, you, if you were to choose one, you would obviously. It's more versatile to have an OCT as compared to these two. But if you were to choose between a structure and a function, they are different. But a function gives you more information than a structure. Yes, sir. Okay, good presentation. Thank you, sir. Good presentation. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Minakshi.